I honestly thought that this uh, video would start with a sentence going back memory lane and checking out this uh, CPU tower cooler, but unfortunately that didn't pan out as I expected. Unfortunately, uh, the Hyper 212 RGB only supports up to AM4 and up to LGA 1200, and unfortunately I don't have any of those. AM4 is, well, I removed it completely from all of my reviews and all the other stuff I'm using completely AM5 as you already noticed and for the LGA well the only ones I have are 1700 so going back to that I decided to do something completely different and uh, switch it up to the Hyper 212 Halo Black now going to run a comparison on these two in terms of specifications and then of course I'm going to run benchmark but not on a regular low mid range CPU actually going to go with a higher end and check what it can do now of course I don't expect it to be even close to 240 radiator I'm not going to mention the 360 but I wanted to see and I wanted to give you guys information in terms of don't cheap out on a um, cooler and it's not about the hyper 212 is bad in those terms right it's not bad because you have to use an appropriate CPU but in terms of using this kind of CPU tower cooler on a high-end processor and cheaping out on cooling, you'll notice the performance loss. But you'll see that in the benchmarks. Let's check out the comparison between these two. So as I stated, the CPU socket compatibility is completely different and the Hyper 212 RGB goes up to maximum AM4 and up to LGA 1200, while for the Halo, you can go up to AM5 and LG1700. That's the first and the main difference. Now, dimensions, when we're talking about the cooler, we have uh, Hyper 212 RGB, 120 times 80 times 158, while the Halo Black goes 124 times 73 times 154. So it's lower than the Hyper 212 RGB in those terms. Now, heatsink material, we have four heat pipes, direct contact aluminum fins, and the same thing actually goes with the Hyper 212 Halo Black. Now the fan is different. What we get here is a different speed, different airflow and everything else. Hyper 212 RGB fan goes from 650 to 1800 RPMs, PWM of course. Then we have airflow 61 CFM, air pressure 2.52 millimeters H2O, mean time before failure is 160,000 hours and noise level is from 8 to 27 decibels. Connection 4 pin for the PWM and that's, that's it. Then when we go and check out the Halo fan, we have 650 to 2050 RPMs, 88.14 uh, cubic meters per hour, that's 51.88 CFM. Air pressure uh, maximum is 2.89 millimeters H2O. Uh, mean time before failure more than 160,000 hours. Noise level is 27 decibels at the maximum. We have rifle bearing on this one and of course 4 pin PWM connection and that's all. So there isn't much of a difference when we're talking about the size. Only the size of the box uh, you can clearly see the main difference, right? But that's totally irrelevant in this scenario. So because of the similar I would say similar specifications and the only difference that could benefit the Hyper 212 Halo Black is the RPMs on the fans reaching uh, 20, 2050, while on the Hyper 212 RGB is 1800 max. Of course, then we have the difference in uh, airflow, air pressure and everything else. But I think the results could be quite similar. And because of that, I went with Hyper 212 Halo to give you this idea. Now, I'm running this... CPU tower cooler on AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D and you might have already seen these benchmarks in some other video because I really wanted to use a full ventilated case for this scenario just to uh, make um, not a fair fight because it won't be a fair fight since it can't beat 240 or 360 but I wanted to check out how it will perform and the difference to see, to give you an idea if you use a 360 AAO and this type of CPU tower cooler. So let's check this out. Now the dual ring on this fan really looks outstanding and love the black finish. Uh, first on the top cover with uh, quite nice Cooler Master logo. And of course the black fins on the passive heatsink 
look outstanding so it could fit in most cases and uh, definitely a nice design yeah now here is the thing when we go and compare this with an extreme 360 aio we get quite some differences so aida 64 with hyper 212 halo black cpu went up to 79 degrees which isn't a bad thing of course because the thermals on the 7900 x3d these are outstanding but then we go with the clock speed and of course in aida 64 you won't get any proper benchmarks but we're testing it out here on 30 minutes so i'm checking the average in the clock speed 4600 megahertz and then we go with the 360 aao cpu goes out to 82 which is higher but the clock speed go up to 4875 and i already mentioned that in the other video but i really want to give you some idea here in this specific one and then Cinebench R23. Now, here is the biggest difference. We see the difference first in thermals, logically, because Hi uh, Hyper 212 Halo Black keeps the 7900X3D at 88 degrees constant. And then we go with the 360 that starts with 86 and lowers it down to 83. And that's not all, because when we go to the clock speeds, Hi uh, Hyper 212 goes 4750 to 4775 megahertz, while the 360 goes from 4950 to 4975 megahertz which of course uh, i'm mentioning this again i'm not shocked to see the difference i'm just kind of enthusiastically talking to you guys and giving you this information so you know what you can expect and then just check the graph you can see the difference going with cinebench score in terms of 1200 cinebench points difference and this is what i'm trying to say don't cheap out on a cooler for your high-end processor i've seen a couple of videos i've seen a couple of builds that actually did this and i'm not saying this is a bad cooler this is quite solid cooler in the price range for a certain processor price range so you have to have you know all those segments lined up if you go with a certain budget be sure to equally spread that budget in those terms this was just a i would say some sort of a fun test to check out the difference between a 4 heat pipe cpu tower cooler compared to a 360 which would be more beneficial for you when we're talking about performance but then you also have some aios that are quite affordable and still do perform on a high-end processor so yeah there's that but regardless of that if you're not running a high-end processor and you're going with something that is in a low or mid tier range hyper 212 halo black or if you're on am4 or something in the intel range up to lga uh, 1200 then hyper 212 rgb there's that it depends on your budget it depends on your design which one do you like more because this one is i think this one is around 10 years old and this is why i'm mentioning this going back memory lane and uh, this one is quite refreshed and new and i really like the design so both of these you can see the links in the description below if you're checking out something like that and that'll be all for today guys if this video somehow helps to explain or give you some ideas or anything similar to that or you have some questions you can ask them in the comment section below but in the meantime don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and click the notification bell for future content thanks for watching guys see you very soon bye bye